Hello. Continuing the 100 hour series, I'm back with another video. This time, we're going to explore the region of Alola, the first of its kind on this channel. As usual, there will be a set of goals that we'll accomplish throughout these 100 hours, which kept me pretty busy. In Generation 7, Game Freak decided to get rid of the trainer cards and replace it with trainer passports. Similar to how it was with the trainer cards, we'll be trying to complete every challenge that is associated with the trainer passport. For the first goal, we'll need to obtain all trainer stamps. There are 15 stamps in total for the trainer passport in Alola, covering a range of activities. Taking your first step as a Pokemon trainer, completing all four island Pokedex, getting 50 consecutive wins in all Battle Trees battle styles, and finally, obtaining the final version of the Pokefinder. And these are quite a lot, all things considered. Completing and getting all 15 stamps will take quite some time to complete. With that in mind, I will only be adding two extra objectives for this video. Adding to my obsession with expensive clothing, another goal I've set for this video is to purchase the full Como-O outfit that is valued at 2.4 mil. And for the final one, a shiny hunt. I think these objectives cover all of Alola's features pretty nicely, as they cover a lot of ground. For this video though, I won't be using the no overleveling rule because they didn't really make much of a difference to the video anyway. I also went through this run semi-blind. The last time I completed Ultrasun was years ago when it first came out. And bad news for House fans, my unnecessarily mean comments for the Pokemon rivals continue yet again. As Professor Kukui welcomed us in this video chat style introduction thing, we were quickly made aware that in Alola, everyone's called Cousin. It's based on Hawaii, yes, where it's commonplace to call each other Cousin, but it's interesting to picture Alola as a huge inbred region. We chose a picture for our trainer passport and gave him our name, Master Fool. This way, we would show them who's a step above everyone else in Alola. Our mother called us to help with some boxes, and we could finally start with the game. I guess not, as Lily was chased around the Aether Paradise. This scene took a good minute to complete. The game opens by showing our mother ready to be crucified, and the Meowth coming up to wake us from our slumber. And god, the introduction to this game was just unbearably long. We were saved by the starter trio at Route 1, and chose Rala to come along with us. He was named Al Popo. Just a short way off, we were introduced to the smiling character, How. He seems nice enough, but something about him screams inadequacy. We were proven right as he chose the wrong starter and completely lost the battle. And then, more cutscenes. We found Nebi in trouble and tried to save it, and we were in turn saved by Tapu Koko. We went down the hill and was introduced to the island Kahuna. Professor Kukui taught us how to catch a Pokemon, and we caught a Grubbin not long after that, naming it Vault Popo. We then met two androids outside of Iki Town, on the loose from the Red Ribbon Army. I kind of forgot the significance of this battle, there were too many cutscenes for the game's introduction, so I stopped paying attention. But we battled How again, who had more Pokemon this time, but not enough to beat us. It's good that he had fun, knowing that he will never be enough. Not enough to measure up to the expectations placed on him, and the expectations he had placed on himself. We got the stone to do some Z-moves with, and moved on to participate in the island challenge. Our mother was ready to be crucified again to bear all of our sins, and we were called by Lily to visit Professor Kukui's lab. How just kind of crashed and welcomed himself into the conversation, something to distract himself from his own inadequacies. We went through the trainer school shenanigans and caught a Zorua. He was named Zopopo. A bit unprepared, we beat the school teacher with much difficulties with a lot of healing items. Alima showed up, presenting himself as a trial captain of Melemele Island. Finally, we were able to progress without any interruptions for about two seconds before Howard jumped around in front of us again. We went to the clothing shop to change out of these nasty garments and came out looking a bit more stylish. It was here in Howley Town that we were first introduced to the game's antagonist team, Team Skull. We beat their grunts in a battle and beat Captain Alima shortly after. There was some more Taurus touching before we left town, a rather common spectacle in Alola. Before the first trial, we caught a Growlithe on Route 2 and named him Ark Popo. The first trial was easy enough and we found ourselves face to face with the totem Pokemon, Gumshoes. Al Popo was a fair bit higher leveled by this time. After stacking some workups, the battle was decisively ended. Alima was quite impressed and we got the normal Liam Z, along with the pose. The androids finally introduced themselves, maybe one day Sol could absorb them to finally become perfect. We caught Noi Popo the Noibat in the cave and continued on. We talked to Lima and Kukui outside the cave and realized something important. The textures and texts are awfully not in HD. So, we look for some HD texture packs and now everything looks crystal clear. First things first though, we caught Genpopo the Ghastly over at the cemetery. Not long after, Al Popo evolved into a Dartrix. Lily and Nebi were fulfilling their role as the game's absolute deadweight, making us search for the blasted thing over at the secret cave hidden at the Melemele Meadow. We were forced to battle one of the androids here and came out victorious after our training session at the hyperbolic time chamber. 
Last Dragon Ball reference, I swear. We were then challenged to another battle by Hao. It hasn't even been that long since the last one. We easily won this battle as well, another reminder that he will never be good enough, no matter how brave and happy a face he put on. Back at Iki Town, it was time for Hala's grand trial. His team was primarily made up of fighting types, so I led with Noipopo, who turned out to be quite useless. Our Popo finished up the rest of the fight. We got the Phytanium Z, as well as the post to use it. Before we continued on our journey, we caught Rock Popo, the Rock Ruff. Lily formally asked us to help with a quest with Nebi, and we reluctantly agreed. It wasn't like the game gave us any other choice. We met Samuel Oak, and Mantine surfed our way to Akala Island. We got some more new clothes upon our arrival, and were met with Sina and Dexio. Genpopo defeated Dexio's Espeon quite handily, and he gave us a full restore. When we got to Paniola Town, Howard challenged us to another battle yet again. While we can appreciate his tenacity, it really didn't change his predisposition for failure. On our way to the next trial, Vault Popo evolved into a Charger Bug. Not long after, Gladion was introduced, another rival of ours. We beat him in a battle, and found that he is somehow linked to Team Skull. We glossed over the next trial with Lana, and faced a totem Pokemon in battle, an Araquanid. The combination of Vault Popo and Al Popo did the job, finishing up the trial. We easily obtained a watery MZ, and the post that came with it. Also, the fishing rod. We encountered the androids again, and was first introduced to the existence of Ultra Beasts. We beat his Poipole, and went on with our lives. We met Hapu for the first time after that, helping a Drifloon out from the trouble with Team Skull. There was the Pokemon Battle Royale thing with Hao, Gladion, and the Mass Royal, but this was confusing. We never really touched the Battle Royale again after this. At this point, I realized that I didn't have a water type to effectively go against Kiawe's trial, but I was a bit too lazy to catch one. The cutscenes really drained my willpower in this game, so I decided to just grind for levels and got Genpopo to evolve into a Haunter. To make this easier on myself, I basically cursed the totem Pokemon and stalled the whole battle with healing items and the rest of my team. We got the Fiery MZ and were shown the pose to use it with. We descended the mountain and this uncle introduced us to the concept of Pokepelago. We would be using this later to EV train the team. I took advantage of the QR scanner to get the island scanned, using this to get the encounter for a marsh top. We caught it and named it Mudpopo. Then, life went on as usual. We met some androids and Colrez, barged in on Gladion's motel room, and participated in Malo's trial. The Lorantis totem battle was really annoying, admittedly. This battle went on for a long time. The battle turned out to be a war of attrition, as the totem Pokemon kept healing, and so did I. Al Popo and Mudpopo won it in the end, though, as we got our Gracium Z. Malo demonstrated the pose and her horrible cooking. Lily was talking with Nebi in front of the Dimensional Research Center, as she was facing her insecurities as well. We then caught a Larvitar over at the Diglett's Cave and named it Tai Popo. We went back to the Research Center and met up with the whole gang. We could do without Hao screaming all over the place though. We met Professor Kukui's wife, who explained the concept of Ultra Wormholes. Just as we exited the center, of course an Ultra Wormhole had to open on top of us. And here, we have a looker. And finally, we made it to Kony Kony City. We didn't do much here, aside from trespassing and collecting totem stickers. We healed our Pokemon and rested for a bit, and headed off for the Grand Trial. Branch Chief Faba found himself harassed by Team Skull, so we jumped in and saved him. He was deeply impressed and we got ourselves invited to the Aether Paradise. We also had this run-in with Plumeria, but her Pokemon wasn't really a match for Mud Popo. Island Kahuna Olivia wasn't really a problem either, with her team of rock Pokemon. Genpopo managed to take out two of her Pokemon, while Mudpopo cleaned up the remaining Lycan Rock. We finished Akala's Grand Trial and got the Rock MZ, and of course, the posts that go along with it, with some extra hip movement. Oh my. And then Hao was just being... Hao. That is, not being enough for anyone. We spent some time messing about outside of Hano Grand Resort, chucking Pukumukus and collecting totem stickers. We met up with Faba inside the hotel, and was taken to the Aether Paradise. How, of course, tagged along like the smiling parasite that he is, and we couldn't say no. We toured around the facility and met Wick, and met some more Pokemon that was being sheltered in the foundation. President Luzamin granted us an audience in the conservatory area, to be disrupted by an appearance of the Ultra Beast. The Ultra Beast fled, and the Android duo came back to make an appearance. On the way out of the facility, How excitedly talked about the Ultra Wormhole and Beasts, only to cover up his constant need to elevate himself. Then, just as we got off the boat, he had the audacity to ask for another battle. He was of course beaten soundly and quickly. He did give us the Lycanian Z though, so thanks I guess. We had to find Professor Kukui at the Mali Garden and tell him about the Ultra Beast and Wormholes. I messed about with the Pokepelago and Beans for a bit before continuing on. 
While wandering about and exploring, Tai Popo evolve into a Pupitar, and All Popo evolve into a Decidueye. Messing about with the Pokepelago took the better part of the hour. At the 14th hour, we finally made our way down Route 10. Here, Genpopo would attain his final form, evolving into a Gengar. We removed the two Team Skull Grunts guarding the bus stop, and rode the bus to the top of Mount Hokulani. Here, I made the decision to catch a Bagon. And since his encounter rate is pretty small at this patch of grass, the rate being 1%, it took me about an hour before figuring out there was a better location with a higher spawn rate. We finally caught one though, naming it Salapopo. I wanted to properly EV train my team, so I ran the Mantine serving course a number of times to buy some vitamins for my team. I would give these vitamins until the EV stats max out at 100 and continue to EV train them some more. It did take a while because I had no power items, but we powered through nonetheless. Salapopo evolved into a Shulga to open the 19th hour, and we went on to challenge the next trial. We were greeted by Malayne in front of the observatory, and received the Stelium Z. There was a short conversation with Malayne and Professor Kakui, and we could finally challenge Sophocles after that, or at least, challenge his trial. His trial consisted of some Shargebug puzzles, and they were pretty easy. We solved the power line puzzle, and the totem Togedemaru came down to save the normal, smaller one. Mudpopo practically spammed bulldozers here, finally taking out the totem Togedemaru. We got the Electrium Z, and learned the pose too. We went back to Mali Garden to find Professor Kakui and Guzma, and we ended up battling him. I forgot what his team composition was, and kind of had a hard time. We won the battle though, but not without casualties. Mudpopo was able to evolve shortly after, into a Swampert. Hapu caught up to us at Route 12, and enabled us to summon a Mudsdale for us to ride. Over at the Aether House, the kids needed to be put in their place, so we did just that. Absolute domination. Ace Rolla told us to meet her in front of the trial site, so we went to the abandoned shopping mart. We went through the rather simple and spooky trial, and Mudpopo and Alpopo managed to finish it. We obtained a Ghost TMZ and a spooky pose after. Back at the Aether House, Plumeria and her goonies ambushed the group. We beat her again, and found that a Pokemon from the Aether House had indeed been kidnapped. We had Grimesley to help us, and was granted a Sherpedo to ride upon. Arcpopo finally evolved with the help of a Firestone into an Arcanine. After a long trek, we finally made it to Potown, where there were an astonishingly large number of Team Skull battles. These battles really made the area really arduous and grindy. I found myself being somewhat annoyed at this part of the game. Making it to Guzma was an achievement in itself, and Arcpopo made it a somewhat easy battle. Guzma was a gentleman about a defeat, and returned the stolen Pokemon. The mysterious policeman Nanu greeted us outside the hideout and healed our Pokemon. We beat Gladion again at the Aether House, and learned that Gladion was trying to save Cosmog. He dragged us to a ferry, but we were stopped by Nanu again, who turned out to be the island Kahuna. We didn't have too much trouble with him though, as Mudpopo and Salapopo proved to be more than able to take his Pokemon down. We cleared Ula Ula's grand trial, and got yet another Z power, and the pose that went along with it. Before going through with the story, I took some time to grind for a bit, gaining some levels. We also got a new member to the team, Popo the Jolteon. Since this part of the game is rather boring and uneventful until the actual boss fight, I won't bore you with the details. We found Team Skull up on the Aether Paradise and battled Guzma again, resulting in another win with Arc Popo. We found the androids blocking our way and dismantled their Poipo. Finally, we were able to get past all the obstacles and found President Luzamine trying to open the Ultra Wormhole herself. We decided to battle and she let with her Clefable, and I decided to go with Mud Popo to whittle her health down. I switched to Arc Popo at the end and finished the Clefable with a Flamethrower. Next was her Milotic, and I sent out Popo, who was able to take down the Milotic with two discharges, despite almost dying. Arc Popo took care of a Lilligant, and Gen Popo was able to down the Beware that came after. For her Lopani, I sent Mod Popo back out. Mod Popo was able to use one Brick Break before being charmed, so I switched to All Popo, ending the fight with a Leaf Blade. Lu Zemin opened the Ultra Wormhole anyway after the battle, and Guzma went in after her. Nebby turned into this thing, and the androids were left upset. Lily, uh, Z-powered? She got a makeover of some sort, and vowed to play her part in this mess. Hal kept on trying to stay positive, even though deep down he knew, he will never be enough. We made it to Pony Island, and met Mina. We asked around for the island Kahuna, and found that this island doesn't really have one. We did find Harpu and her Mudsdale, and talked over our next course of action. We got jump scared by Hapu's grandmother, and made our way to the ruins after stealing all the totem stickers from Hapu's house. We solved this pretty easy strength puzzle over at the ruins, and witnessed Hapu being chosen as the island kahuna. Back at the Seafolk village, we were told that we needed to go to the Exeguro island to do... something. 
We freed the Exeggutors from their pincer parasites, and Salapopa was finally able to evolve into the pseudo-legendary Salamans. Ah, right, we got the Sun Flute and made our way back to the Seafold Village. We then had to traverse through the vast Pony Canyon, but not before being ambushed by this gang of Team Skull Grunts, who were no stronger than a fruit fly. Plumeria calmed the Grunts down and gave us the Poison EMZ. We had to battle the androids again, and this time it's no different. Another win in the bag. After all the tribulations, we finally made it to the side of the final trial. With Salapopo in our team, this trial was quite possibly the easiest one. Came time to fight the totem Komo'o, Salapopo was able to down it with two dragon claws. The ally Scissor was taken out by Arc Popo shortly after. We got the Dragonium Z and found ourselves at the Altar of the Sun. Lilia Master Fool played some banging tunes on the flute and summoned Sol Galeo. Before we could pursue Luzumin and Guzmon, they were ejected out of an ultra wormhole with Necrozma following after them. Sol Galeo attempted to fight it but got possessed in the end. With the appearance of Necrozma, Ultra Beasts landed in the different parts of Alola. We had to battle Necrozma, but this battle wasn't too difficult. With the Fire EMZ, Arc Popo was able to take it out in two moves. The Necrozma disappeared, and the androids gave us a solution to the problem, letting us ride on Lunala to travel through the Ultra Wormhole. This part was an absolute nightmare. I wasn't able to control the Lunala because there was no motion control on the emulator. I could only pray that we landed on the right wormhole, which took several tries. We finally arrived at the Ultra Megalopolis, greeted by even more of Dr. Jiro's creations. I was told that this Necrozma battle could be tough, so I brought in with me the absolute counter to this Ultra Necrozma. A Focus Sash Ratata. Rat Popo hung on with his Focus Sash and used Endeavor to take the Ultra Necrozma's health down to 1. In the next turn, a Quick Attack sealed the deal. Nice. We were also gifted this Poipol, which if we were to use the Android's Poipol as an example, wouldn't be a very good Pokemon. We accepted it nonetheless and named it Poipopo. We saved the world and was able to go back to Seafold Village. We had to battle Mina first after beginning the trial and it turned out to be a pretty simple battle. The rest of the trial though wasn't so simple. We had to backtrack to most of the trial captains and battle them one by one, which took the better part of our 31. When we finally got all the pedals together, the finished product summoned the totem Pokemon, a Ribombi. This Ribombi turned out to be the easiest totem, with Genpopo one-shotting it with an acid downpour. We finished Mina's trial and obtained the Fairy MZ and the pose. Hala and Hapu met us outside Mina's house, and we were told to go back to the Executor Island once more to finish Pony's Island Grand Trial. The battle with Hapu wasn't challenging enough to be explained in detail, we pretty much wiped the floor with her. We finished the final Grand Trial and obtained another Z-move. We were informed to go to Mount Lanakila, where Professor Kukui has finally succeeded in assembling Lola's first ever Elite Four. Upon arriving at Mount Lanakila, we found Gladion descending the elevator menacingly. Aside from having Genpopo outsped by his Crobat and getting killed in one shot, and having Popo die to the Crobat as well, everything else went quite fine. Mutt Popo, Sala Popo, and Arc Popo cleaned up their mess. Gladion said goodbye in his own way, and we made the trek up Mount Lanakila. We found Necrozma, which had its capture rate increased by a substantial amount. We caught it with a Pokeball and named it Necropopo. Cole Rez appeared after a long absence and congratulated us. Having made it to the top, we got ready to battle Alula's first ever Elite Four. Al Popo came out of his Pokeball by himself and hyped us up. Professor Kukui welcomed us to the brand new halls and onwards we went. The first Elite Four member we took on was Mulane with his team of Steel types. I sent out Arc Popo first which was able to take out Mulane's Klefki with ease. I should have switched Arc Popo out here and paid for my mistake. Arc Popo was easy prey for the duck trio. In an uninteresting turn of events, from here on out Mud Popo took charge and basically ended the fight by spamming earthquakes. We won against the first Elite Four member and healed the party before moving on. Next, we took on Ace Rola and her team of ghost types. I led with Genpopo, who was able to take down Ace Rola's first two Pokemon, Banette and Palosand. Came the Delmis, Genpopo also took it out with Shadow Balls despite nearly dying. Genpopo was outsped by the Frostlass and fainted. Arc Popo was able to take out the Frostlass while Popo took down the Drift Blame with Thunderbolts. Two down, two to go. The flying type golfer Kahili was next, and this went just about as you would expect. Popo absolutely destroyed her team. From her Braviary to her Hawlucha, Oricorio, and her slightly more resilient Mandibuzz, Popo finished her 2 cannon to end the battle. Finally, we only had one more Elite 4 member to beat. We found ourselves face to face with Olivia again, this time a lot stronger. She led Armaldo, and I led Mud Popo. Mud Popo halved the Armaldo's health with Earthquake and tanked the sizable Exorcer. The following Earthquake was able to take it down. For her Cradley, I switched again Popo and forced the Sludge Bomb. After being hit once, Olivia recalled the Cradley and sent in her Probopass. I switched to Mudpopo again and used Earthquake. 
The Probopass hung on with Sturdy and healed, making the next few turns spent trying to kill this big flying nose. After it finally went down, Olivia sent her Cradley back out, and I sent Genpopo out again. This time, Genpopo's Sludge Bomb took its health down to red, and it went down to poison damage. For Olivia's Lycan Rock, I switched back to Mudpopo and healed before taking it out with an Earthquake and Brick Break. Olivia sent out her Gigalith next, and two more Earthquakes finished the job for Mudpopo. We beat all of Alola's newly minted Elite Four, and proceeded to approach the champion seat. Of course, it wasn't the end. As it turned out, Hao was able to beat all of the Elite Four as well, requiring us to battle this failure to prove our worth as Alola's soon-to-be champion. Hao led his Raichu, and I led Genpopo. Again, I didn't know Alolan Raichu would outspeed Genpopo, and he died to one Psychic. Our Popo was out, and one shot at the Raichu with Spirit Shackle after tanking a Psychic. Hao's Flareon was next, and I switched for Mud Popo, who was able to deal with the evolution with ease. Hao sent out his Tauros next, and I used a Roto Boost to negate the Intimidate. Mud Popo tanked two double edges, before being able to retaliate with a Brick Break. I healed Mud Popo, and Hao healed his Tauros as well. In the end, after a bit of back and forth and more healing, the Tauros killed himself with a double edge. Hao chose his Crabominable next, and I switched for Salapopo, who was able to one-shot the crab with Fly. Next was his Primarina, and I switched to Popo, whose Z-powered Gigavolt Havoc took her out in one go. Last was Hao's Noivern, which Salapopo dragon clawed to death. In the end, no matter what Hao does, it will never be enough. We were crowned champion and entered the Hall of Fame, effectively getting a stamp. We started our reign as Alola's champion by catching Ultra Beasts. Sophocles then came running to us, claiming that Team Rainbow Rocket had indeed taken over his festival plaza. We were able to expel the criminal grunts from the plaza, and saw a report on the Aether Paradise interrupted by more of their members. Lily barged in our house to let us know that she was going to the Aether Paradise, a sort of passive way of telling us to come and help. She knew that we couldn't say no. How manipulative. Before heading to the invasion site, we explored Pony Island for hour 34, at some point running into Looker and Annabelle. In preparation for the battle tree later on, we caught a Gabite at Haina Desert, naming it Chompopo. Aside from grinding, we also messed about with Pokepelago some more for the berries, and finally rose the team's affection to make EXP grinding easier. This took the rest of the 35th hour. Chompopo was able to evolve into a Garchomp after his training arc. Also, while grinding for levels for Chompopo, we ran into this shiny Chansey while chaining Chanseys for EXP. Thankfully, we were able to catch it, completing our shiny hunt objective. A totally welcome surprise. Finally, at the 37th hour, we were able to start the Rainbow Rocket story. This part of the game was neat, to say the least, but it was admittedly tedious. The Rocket Grunt battles were placed at every corner, seemingly placed there just to create extra playtime during episode RR. I'm not going to cover everything that happened here, but we did get to battle Archie, Maxi, Lisandra, and of course, Blue Spaceman. Getsis was also there, in all of his splendor. Still got beaten pretty easily though. Aside from the boss battles, my favorite part of this whole episode has got to be the Giovanni fight. The rocket theme rearrangement was great and the battle turned out to be interesting enough. Most of his team were bearable, but his Mega Mewtwo at the end killed more than half of my team. Granted I didn't really prepare for this battle, but it took the four of my Pokemon to stall him and Champopo to deliver the final blow. Quite a fun battle indeed. Giovanni fled the scene and Colrez was able to reset the castle, saving President Luzamine. Giovanni watched from a distance and continued to plot more evil schemes. Definitely one of the more sinister bosses from the evil teams. I spent hours 39 and 40 breaking boulders with Taurus to farm some comet shards in order to raise some mad cash to buy the Komo'o outfit. After selling all of our possessions and otherworldly objects, we were able to get enough money for the clothes and flew to Haole City. We went to the shopping mall and bought the full Komo'o set, costing us 2.4 million. With this, we completed yet another objective for this video. At the 41st hour, we finally made it to the battle tree, where we were greeted by Red and Blue. I chose to battle Red just because I was more familiar with Red's team at the time of playing. Beating Red with a team that I had wasn't too difficult, especially playing with Switch Battle Mode. After beating the Mute, we looked around the battle tree for a bit, before deciding to complete all four island Pokedex first, prior to challenging the battle tree. And this took… a while. Catching Pokemon, trading with myself on another emulator, and just generally leveling and evolving the Pokemon in the box took a mighty effort. Sadly, it doesn't really make for interesting content. I left catching the island legendaries for the end though, to give a more concrete ending to the Pokedex efforts. We caught Tapu Koko to complete the Mele Mele Pokedex, naming it Koko Popo. Tapu Lele was next, marking the completion of the Akala Pokedex, nicknamed Lele Popo. Pony Island's Tapu Fini was next, and it was named Fini Popo. And finally, before catching the last legendary, I got lost at the desert. 
I suppose I was pretty fed up with the game after trying to cram so many hours in the effort of finishing this video, so I didn't even have the heart to solve the desert puzzle on my own. I had to look up a guide for this. I was quite tired that I didn't even think twice about throwing the Master Ball at Tapu Bulu. It was named Bulu Popo, and we were finally able to complete the Pokedex stamps. We completed all four islands' Pokedex registrations and got four more stamps to the collection. The battle tree went just about how you would expect it to go, riddled with a lot of trial and error. I attempted the double battle streak first, just because the experience with Gen 6's Battle Maison was still fresh. The battle tree was a bit more interesting because we'd get name trainers every now and then. I had the pleasure to battle Grimesley twice on my journey up. At the end of the 71st hour, we had the pleasure of battling Blue after a few challenge resets. Blue sent out his Rhyperior and Arcanine first, and I led with my trusted Chom Popo and Tom Popo the Rodom Heat. Tom Popo went for a Discharge first, which damaged the Arcanine nicely. The Arcanine went for an all-out pummeling, one-shotting Tom Popo. Chom Popo followed up with an Earthquake, downing the Arcanine. The Rhyperior went for a Rock Slide, but it didn't do much. Blue sent out Machamp next, and I sent out Pod Popo the Glissopod. Chompopo used Earthquake, almost killing both Rhyperior and Machamp. The Liquidation killed the Rhyperior, but Chompopo went down to a close combat. I sent out Salapopo last, while Blue sent out his Aerodactyl. Both Salapopo and Aerodactyl Mega evolved, and the Machamp used Protect. The Aerodactyl took Podpopo to the sky, and the Machamp just kind of died by itself with a burn. Podpopo survived the sky drop, and the collective attempt from Salapopo and Podpopo won us a 50th streak. Another stamp to our collection. The single battle streak was also quite bearable, but it took me a few tries with the team to get it completely right. I had some help from a couple of guides, but ultimately worked out my team's kinks. At the 83rd hour, I was finally able to face battle legend Red. Red opened with a Snorlax, and I led with Salapopo. Salapopo was able to tank a double edge, and killed the Snorlax with two returns. I got really lucky here with the Lapras, as he missed his blizzard, allowing Salapopo to down him with two returns as well. Red chose Venusaur for his last Pokemon, and that was just generally straightforward. We beat Red for the 50th battle streak, and earned another stamp on our trainer passport. The multi battle was… frustrating. It took me the whole weekend to try and figure out why I couldn't scout good trainers at the single and double battles, and I keep ending up with some no-name preschoolers. I tried scouting at every 10th battle at the singles and doubles, but I could never scout the name trainers. I read in forums that people were able to scout Colrez, Grimesley, and even Cynthia, but I couldn't seem to find them. Growing increasingly frustrated, at around the 95th hour mark, an ingenious idea dawned on me. I could just boot another emulator, copy my save file, and partner with myself. So that's exactly what I did. Two master fools, ready to dominate. It took me a bit under 10 in-game hours to reach the top, where we met Battle Legends Blue and Red again. The Legend pair sent out Blastoise and Rhyperior first, and the fools sent out Tom Popo and Chom Popo. The Blastoise faked out Chom Popo, while Tom Popo Volt switched to Blastoise and switched to another Chom Popo. The Rhyperior went for a Continental Crush and damaged one Chompopo. The less healthy Chompopo used Earthquake, killing the Blastoise. The healthier Chompopo also used Earthquake, killing everything on the field. The Legends sent out Exeggutor and Lapras, and I sent Chompopo back out. Chompopo used Thunderbolt, while Chompopo used Crunch. The Lapras used Surf, killing both Fool's Pokémon. We were left with only Salapopo, having to take on both Pokémon. Salapopo Mega Evolved and downed the Lapras with a return. The Executor used grassy terrain here, and I'm not really too sure why. With a free hit, Salapopo ended the coconut tree, winning us the 50th streak on the multi-battle style. This was a huge relief. We were able to gather 14 out of the 15 stamps, and the last one really shouldn't take too long. Or so I thought. After being asked this outrageous question by Rotom Dex, we would soon learn that there was an enormous grind for the Pokefinder. Even though I've already started for a bit during our journey, going from version 4 to version 5 requires a million and 400,000 more likes. So, I was left with no choice as I grinded for likes on social media like a sad 21st century man. We got it in the end though, as painful as it was. We got all the stamps as well, completing all of our objectives, thus concluding this video. It took us almost 108 hours of coordinated, goal-oriented gameplay. Tedious. That's how I felt during this whole run. While this game could be a lot of fun, the sheer amount of cutscenes and story-related elements do take me out of the game at some points. The higher difficulty spike at the beginning do make it more fun and challenging, but a lot of it was taken away by how often we were interrupted by the game trying to progress the story. It was akin to us trying to run a marathon, but was continuously halted by people trying to offer us drinks every two seconds. I suppose one of the main culprits was how, and well, we know how he is. Nothing he does will ever be enough, for anyone. But it was all in jest, as I am sure you guys are aware. So was the roast on Wally on the Alpha Sapphire episode. 
In relation to this episode's roast on how, the feeling of inadequacy, is something that a lot of us struggle with on a day-to-day -day basis. I hope anyone that deals with this can find your way out, and that nothing you do is in vain. One step at a time. With that said, I'll see you in the next one.